friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you could be here to spend some time with me today. Now I know it's not Wednesday, but I did mention last week that we were having some family in to spend Christmas with us and I'm just having some challenges finding time to work while they are in the room next to me sleeping in. So I'm doing the best I can and so happy Thursday to all of you. I'm also gonna be starting our January Crash Your Stash series. And this is my first project. I'm going to be using this great collection from Authentic Paper. This is the Stitches collection. I've had this for a bit. I have already used up all of the focal images and the journal cards that I like from that collection. So I went ahead and designed a printout that I could use. So you could use this with any kind of sewing paper or whatever pattern paper that you like. I've had quite a lot of time to work on quiet projects. So I'm working on my new printable collections. And so of course I wanted to make one for sewing. Now I printed this on 65 pound weight cardstock and I printed it just exactly as the file was intended. I didn't size it or anything and I knew I would be able to use all these tags so I just went ahead and printed all of them out. While I've had quiet time I have also been adding a few other fun printables to my shop so you can check these out at the link in the description below. But for now let's go ahead and get started on today's project. I've already shown you most of the base for this pocket folio, but we do have quite a lot of new subscribers and I wanted to make sure that they could see this. I'm also going to make one small adjustment so it will be easier to follow along if I cover this again. So the first thing you want to do is grab a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and this is 110 pounds. You definitely want that because it's going to be a whole lot more sturdy. And when I give you the measurements, I am going to share the measurements between the score lines. So that way you'll know what each portion is meant to be. Okay, so to get started, I'm just going to make sure that my paper is positioned right up into that corner. And my first score line is going to be at two and a half inches, and that is the height of our pocket. The next score line is going to be at a quarter inch. I'm going all the way down. You can't see me because it's going off camera, but I did go all the way to the end of that paper. The next portion is five inches. And so I'm gonna put my score line in here, all the way down. And then the next one is going to be in half an inch from that. So this is going to be the fold over in the flap that will close up this pocket folio. So now we've got our measurements going in one direction. Let's go ahead and turn that one rotation to the right. And now my first section is going to be five and three quarters. I'll go all the way down and then I'm gonna add a half an inch on to that. So all the way down again. And what I've done is marked out where the portions of this paper I'm going to cut out because that will help it to fold up. So I'll just go ahead and snip out that portion now. Okay, here's what we have left. Now you'll want to take your time and do a much better job at cutting these nice and square and even. So what we have is the bottom portion here is going to be the pocket. So I will fold up on both score lines and then we'll have a pocket depth of a quarter of an inch. Sometimes 110 pound paper is a little bit hard to fold, but just take your time and do a good job and get a good solid crease there. Do both sides. Okay, so now we have the depth of our pocket. If you fold on the score line between the pockets, you'll get the depth of the folio. You want to fold in your remaining two scores. This will be the depth and also the front flap for the cover. So in the original 
video where I shared this design. I had included an additional portion which would be a fold down from the top. We're not going to do that this time because I just wanted to simplify this as much as possible so that we could use this as a quick base to use for many different collections and get through that paper. The whole theme of January is get through those collections. So the next thing you want to do Add your pocket sides in. So I've just cut these from what would have been remaining. Now, of course, I didn't on this one because I had marked it off, but I just have two pieces of that 110 pound card stack. It is two and a half inches tall. Remember that is the height of our pocket and then two and a quarter inches wide. I scored it at one and one and a quarter so that I would have a one inch side and a quarter inch center. And typically I would want to use some of this double-sided adhesive as well as good strong glue like Tombow because there will be pressure on this pocket. You wanna make sure that it is well adhered and it's going to stay sturdy. So I'm just lining up that side here. And remember this would also have wet glue. So give that a minute to set up and then pull your tape from the other side and hold that nice and square and bring the back up to it. That's a good way to make sure you get the right depth for your pocket. Okay, so now we've got one side done and you would do the same for the other side and that would be the full base for your folio. I wanted it to be easier to finish this folio again, so I have changed some of the measurements instead of different size inserts. They're all going to be the same measurements, and then I'm also gonna add an A2 size card insert as well. Also, all of the larger surfaces here will get the same size measurement for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover those measurements very quickly, and then I'll put um, this together, speed it up a little, and add some music so that we can get through this portion even more quickly. So the first portion that I have I'm going to add is the front flap. This cardstock measurement is a five and five eighths by three and five eighths. The pattern paper is five and a half by three and a half, and don't worry, I'll pop those measurements up on the screen as I'm sharing them. So this will go on the outside. For the inside, I'm using the same measurement as the cardstock because I wanted to eliminate a little bit of the bulk. So, so five and five eighths by three and five eighths will cover the inside. You'll want to have four of these large portions. So these will cover all of the surfaces of the inside and the outside of the folio. The cardstock for here is five and five eighths, and then four and seven eighths high. The pattern paper is five and a half by four and three quarters. So you're gonna need four of those to cover. Here are our pockets. These are going to be five and five eighths by two and three eighths, and the pattern paper is five and a half by two and a quarter. For our inserts, these are all layered on 110 pound cardstock. My first layer is going to be five by four and a quarter. The cardstock is four and seven eighths by four and an eight. The pattern paper is five and a half by four, and you're going to need four of those as well. For our A2 size insert, I have a piece of 65 pound weight cardstock cut to be eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter, so that's a standard A2 size card. The cardstock layer is five and three eighths by four and eight, and the pattern paper is five and a quarter by four. I chose to go ahead and add this off cut that I created from the other pages, but it is not necessary. If you want to add it, it's an inch and a half by the same 
Width is the pattern paper, so five and a quarter. And then of course I'll add all of my layering bits as I work along. So for my square that's going on the front, this is a panel that will help to increase a little of the space I can add for finishing. This is 110 card stock again, and this is four by four. The card stock is three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. The pattern paper is three and three quarter by three and three quarter. I finished the back side with another piece of off cut and a little bit of the card stock. And then I put my adhesive only on the top portion where it will overlap the flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started finishing this folio now, and then I'll come back in at the end and we can add all the finishing touches. Okay, I got ahead of myself just for a quick second, so you're gonna see a little bit of adhesive there. But what I forgot to do was add a little bit of my ribbon. This is going to be a nice closure so that we can keep all of the contents of our folio tucked nicely inside. So you do want to have a good amount there to tie a generous size bow. And then you'll notice that I did add a little bit more of my wet adhesive to the back just so that I will be confident this is very secure. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this square now and put a little pressure. This will help to secure that ribbon between those layers. So now let's fold it up and see what we've got to work with down here. Let's go ahead and cut this excess off and we can adjust that later. So you'll see that we do have a nice covered folio and I can just go ahead and start to add all of my embellishing. So first I'm going to add my doily. Now this is that Recollections doily I use often because it does help to break up some of those busy paper patterns and I'm not worried about keeping this focal image area confined to that square that I added on top because remember this is nice solid area here and you can add to it. And so here is the printout that I chose. I went ahead and cut that with a small white border around it so that it would look like an ephemera piece. I did add an eyelet here and put a little twine through the top and then I pop that all up on some spacers so that we can get some dimension. I'm just going to open this up a little so that I can put some good pressure on this and make sure that this is well adhered. So I just kind of want to position that so that I am getting most of that doily around the top part and press that in place very well. Okay, so next thing I wanna add is my very petite sized floral arrangement. No, I'm just kidding. I just went all out with these large, beautiful flowers. I picked these up from really reasonable ribbon. And so these are the lotus flowers and the magnolia. I switched out the centers for stamens that I thought would match a little bit better. So that's just kind of a, a soft green color rather than the shocking yellow, which might be accurate for flowers, but doesn't really match my project. And like I said, I have all of this space here to add that and it's going to 
kind of make a little bit of frame on the side of my printable. I also added a little bit of die cut foliage there and some loopy twine bows. I'm giving this a good pressure as well because this is heavy and I want it to have a very good contact with that background. And so I'll just go ahead and work on finishing the inserts now, and then we'll add the rest of the finishing touches when we get them done. So first thing is we had our just regular flat inserts. These are not the folded type. I just used the paper from that six by six paper pad, and I decided that I would have the same on both sides for each layer. You don't have to do that. You can have it mix and match all you want to, and if you're getting through your paper, that is the most important thing. I also chose not to cover the back because I wanted there to be room to add some journaling and the rest of this paper is pretty busy so this will give you this will give you a nice place to add your writing and the memories that go with your photos and you can also add photos to the back as well so that just makes it a little bit more flexible i have two sets of course and one is going in each side and then i also have that a2 size card so i'll just go ahead and get through that really quickly and i'll put some music on for you while I assemble that. Okay, so that is my top folding A2 size card insert. I have one for each side and I picked one of the tags for each of the cards just because I really enjoyed them and I couldn't pick which one I liked. So I just printed all of them and used most of them for this project. I'll also mention that I did not add dimensional adhesive behind these because we need to reduce some of the bulk on the inside of the folio so there's more room to add all of the pictures and all the finishing touches. There's a little bit of extra room here in the pocket so if you have some flat keepsakes or mementos you will be able to tuck those inside as well. Now like I mentioned we do have some extra of those printables and I thought it would be fun just to tuck them down into here so that you could use them throughout this folio wherever you wanted it to include them. And so it's just nice to tuck them in here. I put them inside this folded A2 size card so that it would keep them from coming out. And so here's two for this side as well. And so let's just close this up. You'll notice that I finished the inside and back of that A2 size card and I was able to get the insides and the back of both of these cards out of one sheet of paper. So that was a great use to get through a whole sheet of the pattern paper from the collection. So now you can see that we have added just enough to keep this folio with the perfect shape. It will be supported well. I'll wrap that trim around. And so what I wanna do is go ahead and finish some extra details for the top. I have a couple of pretty little sewing theme charms and I'll add those as I do with hot glue. I'll press those strings into the glue and then remove the excess and finish that cut and with a vintage button. This has some thread through it too to help it stick into that hot glue. So I'll just finish off the top there. That is a sweet little vintagey button. Let's go ahead and tie this up now. And I'll cut my ribbon trim at an angle so that it doesn't fray. 
give a similar size tail to this side so it looks even. Now I did want to include a couple of these sequins as I do, so I'll just go ahead and anchor these near the corner of the tag and the square portion. I'll secure those with some of my Tombow. Okay, so that is all for our sewing theme pocket folio using the vintage sewing printable from the shop. I'll go ahead and leave a link for that printable at the top of the description so you can go and check that out. This is also our first project for Crash Your Stash January. I hope this inspires you to have some good solid base designs that you can bring any collection to to finish it and get through some of your stash. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave me a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what collection you would finish this pocket folio base with. You can find links for all our social media sites in the description below. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. I hope that you will consider joining our crew by subscribing to our channel and hitting the like button so that you'll be notified every time we add new content. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.